Hey friends, welcome. It's Bad Pixie Night. One, two, three, four. It's the fifth out of the six of the Natural Halloween Makeup DIY series. And you'll notice that although it's not a 100% like step by step tutorial, it's me figuring out things and going through the process of how I come up with my makeup looks and doing it the way that I can best do it or try new techniques. So I encourage you to try to get messy, make mistakes, and try it along with me. If you see something you could have did better, which I really hope so, because there's always somebody out there that can improve upon the things that we do. Um, do it and and go send your look and say, look, this really worked for me. This didn't really work for me. I love it. I love creativity. I love um, being unafraid to try things out. You know what else really encouraged me today on not being afraid to try things out? So some of you guys may know this and I might be way behind on the bandwagon. In fact, I'm usually, I always claim that I'm drug behind on a bandwagon if I am on something trending because that is just usually how I end up. So welcome to Vicka Speckled Cactus. This is your girl Daphne. If this is your first time watching, don't forget to give me a new kid hashtag new kid so i can say hey and welcome you and say thank you for coming by also give me a cactus emoji if you shared this video out i will enter you into my giveaway series winner is being announced tomorrow um so for that i'm going to show you my little haul of what we're going to do for this bad pixie look i'm going to show you what it looks like just to give you a refresher we're drinking our um our drink today of peach iced tea so so good and we're using all natural makeup okay unique for those who have asked me that is the brand that i typically use i love how they support a mission of um you should definitely look into it it's sapria s-a-p-r-e-a and i'm going to go ahead and drop that below if you want to go ahead and see what that funds and how that um got started for the whole unique makeup business that we see today and um we're doing this just in honor of having fun for the holidays, trying to get our minds off of stuff that sometimes plague us when this happens. Is it just me or does it seem like as the holidays approach, we get more and more busy, more and more stressed. We put more and more expectations on ourselves and of our families. People might come over simply just to enjoy a meal with us and we get so stressed cleaning out the house or feeling like we need to do a certain thing. I want this not to be that. So if you can just come to enjoy, maybe you don't have that opportunity at this moment, come with me. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so blessed and grateful that you came to say hey. So we ordered these uh, about a week ago. They came in fairly quickly, but uh, pixie ears. <laughs> I think these are so cute. They go over the ear. And I guess, I wouldn't say they're latex, but they're like a flexible plastic or something. I don't know what that would be. Silicone, that's the word. I'm looking for silicone. We're going to put our, our hair over the top today and use our natural hair. We're not using a wig. I still have some left over of my Fright Night colored hairspray in R.I.P. Pink. It was from Walmart. So I'm just going to use that instead of orange. Not a big deal, right? So these are super cute. We're going to color these. Um, I also have two options that I need y'all's help. So if you pop on here and you're catching the replay, I'm sorry. Obviously, you won't be able to help with that. But if you're live, I need your help to decide which color that we're going to use for the eyes. Okay? We are going to put in contacts because I got a lot of cool ones in. I'm letting them soak right now. If you ever order these from T-T-D-E-Y-E. T-T. TTDI is what I would say. Um, they're amazing. Check them out. They are highly rated and they're legal contacts that you can wear that won't mess up your eyes. They do prescription contacts or if you don't want to do prescription, then that's fine. Um, but they're safe to wear. They're soft. Most of them are yearly contacts. You can get daily ones on some ones. Um, and you just want to let these sit out for eight hours soaking in a solution before you put them on. Otherwise, they're going to look a little foggy on your eyes for those who have never wore contacts. Um, so I have one that's called Taurus and this one, I got all these on sale. They still have a big sale. They're calling it their Black Friday sale. But if you buy a couple, you get a couple free. Usually like it's like buy three, get two free or whatever. Go check it out. And um, I don't have a code for them, but one's Taurus. I really like this one. This one's like pink and orange, and it's got some like geometrical things on it. I think that would be cute for a pixie look. 
or these white ones because I saw she had like white eyes. So I'm like, they're kind of boring though. They're not screened. They're not going to cover the whole eye. Hey, Kat. So let me know which one. Should we do white or should we do the Taurus, the pinkish color contacts? Please put below your, um, your vote, white or pink contacts. Um, let me go ahead and put on some moisturizer. Please vote. I love when y'all vote. It just makes my day and helps me not to have too many choices of, you know, choice confusion is what I call it. I don't know what people really call that. We also have today, I've had these for over a year and I just never have been able to use it. How was your day today? Did you have a good Friday? Is anybody out trick-or-treating yet or doing holiday things? Tomorrow we're going to a fall festival. I told my daughter, like, I don't know if we'll be available for trick-or-treating because we're going to Six Flags on Monday after school. But we got to find some things. Let me know how your week is going. What are y'all doing? So these come with different colored gemstones. You apply them with um, either lash glue or this glitter primer. And it just sticks on. We're going to apply that all kind of around the face with some of our natural makeup. Y'all, I'm so excited. <gasps> no, you didn't get the flu. Give me a hashtag replay if you're watching later too. You didn't get the flu. That is the worst time to get it. Why does this always happen? Doesn't it seem like this always happen around when events happen, like holidays and stuff? I'll a key example, I mean, you can't control it, but, you know, we had a family member pass around a birthday time. Oh, my gosh. Do you need me to come bring you a care package? Because I will do that for you. I know what it's like to have the flu, and it really sucks. When I had one bad enough to where we had to one time have our in-laws get Madeline because we didn't have the strength to be able to uh, watch her while we were that sick. But I do believe it was bad food poisoning too. Um, okay, so again, if you're just hopping on, say hey. Thank you for hopping on. Help me decide if we need to do white contacts or pink contacts for our pixie look, okay? Here is the, uh, what's it called? The inspiration picture that we're going from. I say inspiration because even though we do copy a lot of what it looks like, you know, we're still kind of doing our own take to it, our own skills. Um, here's the look. We're going to do oranges, maybe some pinks, some um, reds, greens. Hold on. Let me flip it. It's easier for me to see what I'm pointing at. So, like, see how she's got white? I don't have a white screen like this. I have some yellow and blue that look like that. But I just have regular white contacts, which seem kind of boring. So I just want to know, you know, if you pick white, it's not boring. It's just for me, I have decision confusion. I don't know if I should do that one or the orange and pink. Thank you, girl. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Which one do we need to do? Y'all speak up. Put your vote below. White or pink for this look. Okay. My comments are a little delayed, so just go ahead and pop it right in there. I'll eventually see it. Maybe it will fix whatever's been going on with Facebook. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, these. These are so cool. Okay, so I ordered these online too, but these are fashion eyelashes. These are the closest ones that I could find. The white ones. Okay. Yeah, when I say boring, y'all don't think that I'm saying you're having you're making a boring decision. I just to me it confuses me because then I see the hot pink ones and I get confused. Um I always try to go bolder than, you know, the option I'm given. Aren't these so cool to me? I feel like these are perfect because I could not find any um, contacts. I mean, not contacts. Eyelashes that were really super long. So, these would have the cute little feather ones. And they were under $10. So, I thought these were really cool little, like, pixie eyelashes. I don't know. Maybe. I told you about my son's trauma with, like, the eyelashes, right? He grabbed my phone. I had them sitting in a pocket where I threw my eyelashes down in there because it always seems like at some point in time, if I'm not wearing magnetic lashes and I'm wearing glued eyelashes, I get frustrated with them by the end of the day. And I pull them off, which is very bad if you pull them off harsh. If you're like me and you do that um, or just feel like you don't ever do a good way in that, get you some lash serum. That will help you so you're not shedding your lashes like crazy or prematurely. Um, but I'm going to take my collagen. So 
So I reached in there. I threw my lash. I forgot I threw my lashes in that pocket with my thumb. <laughs> it also had some of my fake fingernails in there. It makes Eric sick. <laughs> He's like, I don't care if they're fake or not. That's disgusting. <laughs> and I know some of y'all probably think that's disgusting too. Would you think it's gross? If you reached down in somebody's pocket and there was fake fingernails or eyelashes in there, let me know. <laughs> or would it not gross you out? So, um... I pull out my phone and apparently one of the lashes had attached to the back of my phone and I give it to my son and he's like, ah! he's like terrified. He had PTSD. <laughs> I know this. I'm so mean I, I like that. I get pleasure out of that, but it's hilarious to me. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. All right. Let me prep my skin with a little bit of some oil just to make sure everything is just soaking in so nicely. My skin has been super, super dry and to the point where I've even had to put Vaseline in my nose, guys. I know it's too much information, but it's my nose and everything. It's just been dried out from the heat, like going to heat. Have you already put your heat on? That's what I want to know too. So number one, this fake eyelashes and nails, if they've been pulled off and they're in a random pocket or sitting around somewhere, is that gross to you? I know it's a weird question. And number two, I just want to know, happy Friday, by the way. And number two, I just want to know, have you already turned your heat on for the, for the fall? Now, some of you who get on here, I know you're from Philadelphia, New York, things like that. So I can definitely understand if you have, but I'm talking about also like my friends who are in the Southeast where the temperatures are ranging anywhere from the forties and then skyrocket up to the seventies to nineties. It feels like, have you already put on your heat and then your air and then turn it off? I feel like it's been bipolar in this house when it comes to the temperature range. Am I the only one? Maybe. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to let this primer sit for a second. We're going to do the, the same thing we did with the eyebrows the other day. What did y'all think about that look yesterday? This is what I meant to tell y'all that I was really excited. I'm not trying to brag. I was just excited. I was not expecting this. So we've been submitting the Halloween looks for the contest for unique two of mine got recognized and i was really excited about it so it was the spider look um in one of the personal groups and then um the one that i did last night of the 20s flapper doll with the big old eyebrow like eyebrows way up to here and the eyeshadow way up to here that one i got and got, got recognized so i was really excited so all i'm saying is if you're like me and sometimes you're like eh you know, somebody out there is way more talented than I am, and they can do this way better, and, you know, I'm just doing this for fun or whatever. It's okay. Still do it for fun, but put yourself out there a little bit, so you never know. Like, it might encourage somebody, and it's really neat sometimes just to, like, see something you put out there in the world. That's why I loved graphic design and why I went to graphic design um, when I went back to school, when I was pregnant. I was like, I'm going to go back to school. I really want to go to Auburn University. That's the school I always wanted to go to. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Even though I'm pregnant, I'm going to do it. And God had told me it was going to be a hard ride. Um, don't forget to share this out. Thank you guys so much for watching. God told me it was going to be a hard ride and that I, I'm, I was going to have to work for it. And But I did. I went through it. I got my degree. Um, it was a very competitive program. Out of like a hundred something people or more, only like I think 40 or less actually would graduate together. Um, and you had to go through several steps in order to be approved so that so that you could be in that program. So anyways, uh, the very first thing, just to encourage somebody out there that I feel like may be hard on themselves or just feel like maybe they're not talented enough or that there's better people out there or whatever the case is, maybe that the devil is lying to you. When I went back for graphic design, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that I wanted to create my own graphics, that it would be fun. I wanted to put my work out there in the world. And I say all that to say this because of the result. But anyway... The first letter that I got when I was in my first round of graphic design, they told me it was a round of like professional graphic design instructors and, um, you know, just everybody from Auburn, very high professional, like they pride themselves on who they accept in their university because they are such a renowned high rated university. 
they're a private university. So, I basically was told my first round, they're like, you know, you're very messy, you're sloppy, your work's kind of low on quality, you know, if you get through to this, you're going to have to put in a lot of work, basically. It was very discouraging. I will say that. I'm going to let this dry for a second. It was very dis discouraging when I got that, because at this point in time, you know, I was a mom. I didn't really know if I was going to be in a successful profession or not. I was a little disheartened because the previous place that I was working at, like I liked it and I was there for years. Hey, Bobby. But I just discovered it just wasn't like the occupation for me. So, you know, having to go to plan B and figure out what the occupation was for me, that was already a hurdle. And then working full time having a family and then be pregnant going back to school that was a hurdle so god had told me you know you're gonna do this but it's gonna be hard i got that letter when i got accepted from the graphic design program i had started back in oh gosh what was it 2011 i think was when i went back to school it was like when maddie was like a baby and i was a manager at a property so like technically i'd gotten the highest that i could get and I was making decent money, I guess. But that's just not what I wanted to do. And this was before I found Unique and knew my self-worth or anything like that or was trying to work on that journey, I, I should say. Um, so when I went back to school and then I get this letter saying, you know, your, your quality is really poor. You're going to have to really work if you want to be accepted in this program. Like, you barely got accepted, so we're going to keep an eye out on you. And I had to push myself through that whole program, constantly getting constructive criticism. People telling me, you know, like, you need to step up. Like, this is good, but, you know, you need to do better at this. It was constant like that all the time. And why do I say all that? Because it doesn't matter if you go back to school for graphic design. You're a nurse. You're a makeup artist. You're doing something in a corporate world. You're a mother at home. You're just a wife. I don't say just. Understand that that's just something I had battled with for a long time. You're a wife. Um, you're retired. You're a school teacher. Whatever the this the thing is, okay. You will always have at some point in time in your life where somebody's better than you are, and where you come across a hurdle where you're like you don't even know if you could do it or if if you have the talent to do it, okay. And you have to come across this decision like, am I going to keep pushing forward and do this? Am I going to prove to myself that I can do this and I'm worthy? And am I going to get better at the things that I do? Okay. And so that's what I had to make a decision on. And I had to push through it. I had to be willing to accept criticism. You're going to have to do that no matter what field you're in. Criticism always is in everything. Someone always thinks they know more than you or better. And sometimes they do. So some life lesson out there for somebody maybe even just a recap for myself i don't know all right so brows have been glued in place i'm going to go ahead and apply my stick foundation over the top um and you just get better at things the more you mess up and get dirty with stuff the better you get can i get an amen from somebody out there who's been through that experience so it was nice when I became a graphic designer, I said all that to say this, it was nice to when I became a graphic designer and I would start designing things, even if it was small little jobs in the local community, I was working for a print shop, I would see some of my stuff that I had designed up on like a billboard or on a menu for a restaurant or for some advertisement or for some pamphlet for a university. And it was like, I did that. I got to contribute that work out into the world i'm not saying that as a humble brag or even a brag i'm just saying like when you feel personally for me in my experience that you have contributed some kind of work out in the community or have done something like that it's just good it's a good feeling and that's how i felt like with that makeup look being recognized it was like ah this is nice you know like prove to yourself every now and then to keep going hey melissa all right so blending in using that stick foundation this stick foundation is definitely a buildable foundation so you can go from pretty much medium to full coverage on this 
And if you have never really thought about what kind of finish you like with foundations, I kind of have noticed that some people are an all or nothing kind of person. They're like either I don't like makeup, I don't want anything on my face, or I want it and I want it all. Sometimes you'll find those people that are in between. I, I feel like I flex in between that. Let me know, are you an all or nothing kind of person or do you kind of flex? Um, I didn't know that there is different foundations out there before I got with Unique and finishes. So you don't always have to do full, medium, or very light coverage. You can do a satin coverage and that basically is something that's more natural to what mimics your skin texture um, and just covers up small imperfections or redness. You can do full coverage and like if you're hiding like acne scarring or hyperpigmentation or just like the way that a matte finish looks, which is a very flat look because maybe you're super oily. You can have a super dewy look, which is very, very like luminous and shiny looking and almost wet. And it could be for dry skin or just people who like that texture. And you can even have an in-between, which is a more natural finish. Um, and it has a slight luminosity to it, but it, uh, it also still has a little bit of some flatness to it as well, like your normal skin would. Um, so there's so many different things out there. Don't say poo-poo to it until you try it out. Stick foundations are about for almost every skin type with the exception of oily. I would say if you're oily skin type, put on a powder over the top of it because it is a satin type finish, which means it still has some softness and creaminess to it. And you will notice, especially when you have oils, anything that has creaminess over the top moves around with your oils. Number one, if you don't have primer, number two, if you don't set it, okay? That's just the golden rule, okay? Um, and then you can even take lightwear like BB cream and build it up a little bit more with like concealer and stuff like that. Or just leave it the way it is for everyday looks. So there's so many different ways you can customize foundations and looks and finishes. And if you've never really thought about it, but you would kind of like to know, I am creating a little bit more of a customized um color matching system it's free it's a quiz i send you your results you can decide then based on those results what you like to pick or if you want to wait just say color match and i'll send you the link it's gonna soon be on my website but it's not there right now okay eyebrows sufficiently covered okay now let's since i did use a um stick foundation i do want to set this so i'm gonna use some powder let's work let it work, work, work. So I was watching this guy, and the reason I got so fired up about, like, pushing yourself, not comparing yourself all the time, like, doing good work, seeing your work out there, this whole conversation, right? This guy named Mark Roper, my, uh, Roper, however you say his name, he's a YouTube influencer, but he's an engineer as well. And my son, Xavier, who's my youngest, his birthday's next week, um... It's fascinated by science and, you know, engineering and how things work and just all of that kind of stuff, okay? He's just very fascinated by it. And so he watches him. And this guy is so positive of an influencer. Have you ever had people who are really cool to watch because they might have a talent, but maybe they kind of have a garbage lifestyle? And you're like, eh, you know, I like the Kardashians. They're pretty interesting, but not exactly my cup of tea for how I want my kids to be, right? <laughs> Um, so this guy's pretty cool. If any of you have ever seen, um, kids watch a lot of YouTube, then you probably know who Mr. Beast is. His name is Jimmy. He's very viral YouTuber, um, who makes a lot of money on sponsoring and basically gives it all away to do good deeds on YouTube and becomes viral because of that. Okay. Very rich, very influential, um, and a very kind person. Um, so Mike Roper, I guess his friends were associated with this guy, engineer, scientist, um, sells some of his stuff as well as like shows people how to do stuff and does like really good things for the community where this one thing he was inventing elephants toothpaste, but did a different version of it called devil's toothpaste. And y'all have, if you've ever seen this, like a big chemical reaction with like foam and everything that explodes out really cool, cool kids experiment, go and watch it. But like, I've always wanted to do the elephant's toothpaste with my kids. So I think we're going to do that soon. And he was 
He threw this big party and big experiment to break through the world's Guinness Book of Records for this kid that was experiencing a rare kind of cancer. It about made me bawl like a baby. <laughs> And that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Like, there's not another you out there. And there might be a million people doing the same thing that you do. But you bring your uniqueness to the table. That right there showed me. All right, let's go ahead and get dive right into this look and stop. All this chit-chatting too much. Like, we'll still chat. But I want to get into the look. Hey, Lisa. All right, again, going back to that good old faithful palette number eight. This is actually still on sale. October anniversary speckled steel until the end of the month. Comes with your choice of the lip products, including limited shades and lip liner. And then you can choose if you want to get a mascara or um, an eyeshadow brush. That will come with free shipping as well. All right, so this is one of the palettes you can choose from. They have different ones. I like this one. It's got the oranges, the greens, the peach colors, everything that we need to kind of start building up this bad pixie look, okay? So let's start, and I actually think instead of going in with this blush brush, we're going to pull out a fluffy brush. It's a little smaller, gets around a smaller area without getting all over and into mixing up the shades, okay? Sometimes you'll notice I'm at a loss for words, and it's in my brain, but my mouth just does not want to communicate it. So if I say eyelash instead of mascara or vice versa, just bear with me. My brain's trying to get it out to my mouth. It just doesn't always communicate that way clearly by the end of the day. All right. So we're going to go from light to dark like we do with eyeshadows. We're going to start with this color called Revived. It's a nice bright orangey peachy color. And we're going to kind of just start at the temples because that's sort of where this little bad pixie girl gets her inspiration. I will go ahead and link the artist that I got this inspiration from, from Instagram later in here if you want to see who I got it so you can follow the artist. I did not come with the, up with this look solely by myself. We are copying. <laughs> and the, from a very wise person, I have learned this. There is no such thing really as copying. You just got to put your own spin to it. And as long as you find the right cat to copy, it can actually be one of the most beneficial things that you ever do. Okay. All right. So just a little bit more of that on this side. And I go a little bit more hardcore on these colors, you'll notice, and a little darker than probably you would see out in real life. And that's just basically so it will show up in this lighting because it's dark behind me. So you want to see this pop out a little bit more. So I have to sometimes make this a little bolder than what it would probably typically be in real life. All right, we're going to do this whole eye socket. And the most interesting thing about this part is she really just has one to maybe two colors blown out over this whole eye color. So what I feel like is this is a good beginner's look to start with because you don't have to do a lot of particular shading or have it in a specific area. You're just kind of blowing this out around the whole eye. And if you use a fluffy brush, it is going to just lightly apply that there instead of putting it harshly like a stronger, more dense brush would. Let me know how y'all's week has been. Has it treated you kindly? I ask that a lot on all my videos just because I'm, I want to know how you guys are doing as well. For me, sometimes it feels like the week can get redundant, especially if you're you know, someone that has a family and you do the same thing over and over again during the days, it can get redundant. It can go by quickly. And it just feels like we're already here at the holidays. And I feel like we really just started the year already. So I don't know about y'all. Maybe it's went by slow for you. Let me know. So I can kind of get your perspective. Okay, so leading in this little pathway of kind of where we're going to take a darker maroon color in a little bit, but we're just kind of creating sort of this off-color, off-worldly plant, poison ivy almost, inspired grunge bad fairy gone wrong. <laughs> that's, that's my interpretation of it. 
I have noticed I've picked a lot of looks this week on the eye around the eye everywhere but almost where it should be <laughs> okay we're going to introduce some greens and some line greens and things like that in a minute but I just kind of want to start from light to dark and get that sort of mapping down of where we want to be at When you cover up your eyebrows, it kind of gives you the free licensings to be able to use it as a different part of the canvas, the look, morph your face a little bit if you want to on your creative looks. Okay, I'm going to dive right into that eye cavern because hers is just nice and flooded with that color. All right, let's start going in with the, I'm going to start on green and then we'll build up um, that maroon color. So I will get two fluffy brushes just so that I'm not mixing up my colors and it turn like a doo-doo brown, okay? All right, so let's start on this green uh, called Amazing. Have you ever like uh, watched an anime show or been to a k-pop style um this is highly specific i know but if you like the same stuff i like then you'll understand but k-pop style like karaoke or watched um a k-pop type show it's so funny i don't know what is with the trope but they use this little um phrase a lot and it's like amazing <laughs> And so they'll like say it in English, but it's kind of like broken English and it's like funny at the same time, very expressive. And so I get that like stuck in my head every time I see that where it's like amazing. All right, and I'm going to give you a little tip on what to do if you start off with like a dark green like I do. This is almost going to have some Christmassy colors to it. I just noticed that. But um, if you mix a little bit of some yellow and with your green, it'll start to kind of give you that lighter green appearance. And it'll kind of give you like a lime green pop in certain areas where you lightly layer that green. We're kind of going for this almost like six swamp monster look. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> go in and make sure I see what I'm doing because sometimes when I'm staring at the camera I see it from far away and it's great to step back and look at your work especially if you're doing anything artistic wise but you got to get up close sometimes too so we're gonna do some darker patches and I'll mix a little bit of like some blacks and stuff in there as we go I notice I gotta like do some facial exfoliating right over my lip here that little mustache type area all right so a little darker patchy area start spreading out that green I love that the greens patchy it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility instead of just like layering your whole face you can kind of do patches And I'm just going to go hardcore, like maybe right here, another strong patch. If you really want it to show up more stronger, get yourself something smaller. Uh, I call this the crease brush because that's the one that we get from Unique. It comes in a bundle. If you want my Halloween brush bundle, just say brush bundle and I'll send you the details. But see how that just applies that a little bit darker because that is a more denser brush. That's what kind of the science comes from behind the whole like eyeshadow and building dimension and stuff. It's the brushes. It's all the magic of the brushes. Gives you the modeled looks, everything. Modeled. M-O-T-T-L-E-D. Not M-O-D-E-L. <laughs> all right. Um... Let's deepen up this area right here. You'll notice the more that it's not just perfectly circular, the better it looks because it's more realistic, right? Okay. 
Um, let's work on this side. I'm gonna kind of do a whole, what's it called? Kind of like a contour with this green. And we're just gonna kind of run it like above the ear. That's kind of like where we start off when we work on a contour. Gives us a nice little place to start and kind of go at an angle towards the corner of our lips. Usually don't go far past the middle of the cheek. We're going to go almost down below to the chin and the jawline because we're going to extend some of that grain down a little bit. You'll find out once you start doing these natural makeup looks compared to the Halloween looks. Yes, Halloween grease paint is all nice and traditional and it, you know, it's fun to dress up and stuff, but let's be real, it gets messy greasy it gets where it makes you sweat it's just itchy i don't know there's just so many things i could say badly about halloween makeup the grease paint okay so if you can use powders eyeshadows things like that that are more natural use it and build up the dimension on it and it will last longer it won't clog up your face as bad i get horrible reactions from halloween paint so i have to really go hardcore on my primer yes i use primer before halloween paint i highly suggest it all right let's do build up right here and so if you use the different brushes, it's going to kind of give you those different looks without having to use a million different colors. This right now, we've only used two colors, okay? Green and, oh, actually three. Green, a little bit of yellow, and that peachy orange. All right. A couple of modeled areas right here. Okay. I might if you mess up if there is such a word of that but like if you mess up you're like eh I don't like the way that one is you can kind of blow it out a little bit using a brush you're not having to scrub the whole paint off you see what I'm saying and just kind of make like a softer area there and go back over it if you want to define it so much more flexible. Okay. I'm going to make a um, about right here. Yeah, something like that. Um, where else do I want to do this? We're going to go ahead and start building up right here over the eye. And kind of like bring it up to the temples where you would kind of do blush giving you these little areas so you kind of know like basically we're still kind of applying these in the same areas you would apply normal makeup we're just doing a different color and maybe a different pattern to it I'm gonna use definitely some shimmer eyeshadow I know just the color to use is called Zazzy is a perfect um, shimmery color to bring you a little bit of some pixie dust look. It's like a really pretty like green eyeshadow that we're gonna use. Let's do kind of like swimming around through this orange. And I'm going to show you how that shimmer is just going to like make everything look better. You got to build everything up first. It may look so weird and blotchy and harsh at first. That's normal. Okay. Just remember that. <laughs> remember that. Okay. Going to do maybe a little splotch here. Just kind of doing these weird little model shape things that they have right here. She's got like these little dots. I don't know what they're supposed to be. 
call them our magic spots. Did that sound perverted? Maybe. I never know if it's going to sound perverted until I get around perverted people that tell me it sounds perverted. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Maybe a slight green. I say slight and then put like this dark color on there. Like, oh, it's just slight. Right here. Around the nose. You blend it out just a little bit with that orange, too. I don't want this to come out. Has anybody ever tried to do any of these looks with nose rings and be like, oh, well, that's a challenge. Let's try this a little differently than what we're used to. It's not bad. It just takes some getting used to. Alright, so we're using that green. A lot comes over left over on your brushes, so you don't have to always go back in and dip back into your eyeshadow. You can use, if it's especially if there's something really harsh and you don't want to apply it to a certain area yet, go to another area and just kind of buff it out all over on your face and get some of that excess off. You'll be surprised at how much your brush holds. Okay, um, let me see. I think she has some going towards her neck. I don't have a really good picture of her neck. So we're just going to kind of like do the best that we think we can with it. And I'm just going to kind of... Sh little shortcut kind of tip here. If you're not really sure like what to do with your neck to match with your face. I do this sort of like to blend in my neck with my foundation because I have a different chest color than my neck. Again, going back to that whole color matching thing. Some people blend near their jaw to go more with their neck and their face. Some people um, do just for their face. Some people do for their chest. So there's different ways you could color match depending on how you like it. I don't like my face to be or darker or lighter than my neck, so I blend according to my neck. And then I add coloring like bronzer or anything like this down the sides of both sides of my neck like this. I'm doing kind of basically the same thing. Number one is going to help to work on the double chin by darkening it in a little bit. And number two, it creates a little bit of some shadowing and some dimension there. So it doesn't look like everything's all just one plain color. Because if you really look at skin... You're going to notice we don't all just have one shade of color. There's going to be some pinks there, some shadows, some lighter highlighted areas. And that is what you want to mimic if you're going to put foundation on. You want to make sure that you have some pinks there, some highlights, some shadows. It really looks good, I promise you. That way you don't have what I call um, washed out face. That's what I call it washed out face. I almost look reptilian, don't I? And you can like itch your face too while you're doing this with your brush. So many good advantages to <laughs> natural makeup. I'm so glad that we did this contest. It's been really fun. It's very cathartic. All right, so see how I'm just adding a little bit of that green on both sides and I'll probably do peach or orange right down the middle to mimic some parts of my face that I'm building up right now. If you get frustrated with a certain spot that you're doing, it's just not working for you, get away from that spot for a little bit like I do and go to a different spot on your face, start working on that. So like if something's just not working with your contouring, your lips, the eyebrows, whatever, move on and go to the next thing like your lashes, is another part of your face whatever and it'll just kind of get you a restart have you ever seen where people like get writer's block or they'll be frustrated about something and they'll sleep on it or like give it a couple days and come back to it and have a fresh new vision with it it's kind of like the same thing basically that's one of the things i loved when i was going to auburn with doing my um a, i did a class called uh, typography and it's basically the study and 
the art form of using letters and the characters to create a design with that. And um, they teach you so much, so much about it. And our teacher there, Miss Lowry, was just so, she had a lot of integrity for her job is the best way I could say this and pride for it. And she just taught us so much. And one of the things she would tell us to do is just go out with our journal or whatever in nature and like just record and get inspiration for where you're going and it will kind of help refreshing up everything. It really did work. Okay. So now that we started on the green, I am going to go over some of the peachier areas and just kind of like start darkening them up. I like to use my hands, don't forget. So if you see me doing that, it's just me getting my thoughts out. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, but it helps. All right, let's so use a little bit of this color called Profound. And I'm just gonna start kind of running that under the eye to darken up that area. And I'm going to kind of start directing it in one little area, kind of almost like a clown design, where it almost looks like a grunge, kind of like this grunge look, more modeling is what I call it. I'm just kind of like focusing that color kind of like if you really pick it up heavy and then you kind of just tap it in there it kind of like gives a lot of debris to that eyeshadow and it will kind of do like that whole thing that you're wanting it to do. I'm going to use a little bit and bring it up here over the corner of my eye where I would normally put darker eyeshadow just to kind of give myself some depth there. Kind of keeping it close to around the crease. I think it's going to give more pop if we do that white contact if, if I just kind of blot and darken that um, lid. For those who have heavier lids, you normally wouldn't do this because what it does is it recedes back into your skull and gives you a more dark, older look because we're doing weird looking pixie look with white um, contacts. It's going to give us the effect that we want, which is that creepy, dark, older, distressed look. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of get a little messy with the eyeshadow here okay let's do the other side again we can make this look whatever we want it to be it doesn't have to be identical so just do what just go with it go with it and have fun with it I used to feel trapped and feel like I could never put eyeshadows up under my eyes. Has anybody ever done that? Feel like it just made you look too old or whatever. And I always would have like dark circles up under my eyes. So I just felt like I couldn't do that until I started learning some ways that you can. I may go ahead and do a tutorial next week on how you can add eyeshadows up under your eyes without it making you look too old or dragging your eye down or making it look purpley. I think we'll do something like that. Now, I want to kind of spread this out a little bit because I don't want this to end up looking like little tears or whatever. But I'm kind of like letting it get a little messy and a little powdery just to kind of give me that grungy look. Let's go over the eyelid. Really making sure that we kind of at least go up to like where that eyebrow is and darkening up that hollow on the inside to keep that recessed look 
that we're going for. It's amazing how the contours of your face and the face shape changes when you add just a little bit of details in certain areas. This is one of them, right near the bridge of the nose. Do a little bit here. Kind of gives that very grunge look to the lip too. She's got some kind of going like from the nose. I don't know what's up with this trend here. <laughs> this peach take a small amount of that maroon color and just kind of darken up certain areas doop, doop, mixing it up I mean you need very very little I promise I need the chin area really get that blended outlook by using the fluffy brush use a little bit more pink here do a little bit right here by the sides of the nostrils I know she's got like a little flare right there some pink just a hint of some pink here with a tiny bit of that I mean I'm barely touching it but a tiny bit of that maroon just to deepen that color up right there okay let me show you where this green is gonna look amazing this lighter green color in just a minute hold on I'm gonna I'm the element of suspense, suspense. Hold on. drop something. It's our first drop of the day, family. Okay, there we go. Let me show you how cool this is, okay? Oh, I'm itchy. Itchy, itchy, itchy. Let me show you how cool this is. Okay, so here we go. You ready? This color is the best. I underestimated this color so much when I first started. And when this came out, I was like, ew, a shimmery green. No, thank you. I'm not a green girl. But it almost gets like a golden look when you apply it on. It's so pretty. I'll never talk bad about this color again. It's called Zazzy. It's called Zazzy. And it's so good. <laughs> It's so good to you, okay? It will treat you well. Don't talk bad about my sassy girl. Alright, let me try something. I'm not sure I don't normally use shimmers with a fluffy brush. But we're going to see what it does. Because it usually causes a lot of particle fallout. But I want to kind of shimmer it all over the place. Oh yeah, this was the perfect color. You ever find something that just works and you're like, yep, this was the right decision. It's definitely Zazzy. It gives you like a perfect amount of highlight to that green area that you're wanting. And you just kind of spread it around anywhere where you feel like it just needs like a good little, ooh, what do you call it, luminescence up in your life. <laughs> I'm going to add it right here along the green. I'm having so much freaking fun with this. This is one of my favorite things. And I was kind of a little, what's the word, intimidated by this look. Because I was like, oh, it looks like 
a lot of mixing together I don't know but I liked the colors because I was like I have these colors I think this would be fun without having to buy a bunch of different shades I think about that and I think about y'all when creating looks because I don't know about you but I don't want to buy eight million different shades starting off when I'm just trying out things so if you can find something in a palette that has multiple shades it's great You know what I mean? Okay. All right, let's do the gruesomeness of this lip. We're gonna apply the eyes. Um, before I do that, let's stop for a minute. We need to get her under control because she's got a match and Okay, so this goes on this side, this goes on this side, so I'm going to start with this ear, and we're just going to start building up that color. I'm going to do, start with like the bright, oranges and maroons on the top, do kind of the greens in the middle. Have y'all seen, I know I talked about this before, the new Avatar movie, I want to see it so bad. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because painting these ears in like different skin tone colors that are totally unnatural, it just reminds me of that show. I really want to see it. And I want to take the kids to Pandora in Disney World. If you have ever been and you've been to Pandora, let me know your experience. Like, did you love it? Was it not as great as it was hyped out to be? Would you go again? Like, or do you want to go? I want to know all the things. And I've heard, you know, Disney's World is not just for the young. It's for the young at heart. So, see what I'm doing? So, I really want to, like, go and get all the experience there. Because um, I'm not going to lie. I haven't really been, been to Disney World. Back in 2017... I had a new job and they took us there for training because it was in the area and we went to maybe like one or two rides. But there were kitty rides and it just didn't feel the same without my kids, to be honest. And it was my first time going to Disney World. And I really want to go and live, live it up. Like have a couple days worth, jump a couple different parks. I've always heard if you're going to do it, don't really do a park hopper where you do the same day. Like do one park per day. And just get the full experience. What do you think about that? Do you agree? I um, have been told, like, put a couple days in between so that you can have break periods and go swimming and stuff like that. What do you think? You think that is, like, totally a thing you should do? Oh, wow. This silicone does so good with makeup. Just as a little hint for those who haven't done cosplay. This is the way to go for sure. You don't need to have, what is it called? Airbrushing kit or none of that kind of stuff. You don't need all that. That's only if you want to get really fancy. But if you're just creating beginner's looks or just need to get by on the things that you want to do to match something, you don't need to have all that unless you just want to play. Deepening up this color. Gonna start applying a little bit of that pretty green on the inside. Starting with a couple of darker areas right in here. This is fun. And see, I love when I can get props that I can use later for different looks. I don't know where I'm going to be wearing my elven ears, but you won't see me other than tonight wearing these suckers. You know what I mean? Alright, see how we're doing that? Oh, it's so pretty! Ah! You didn't see that. Nobody saw me drop that. <laughs> Alright, um... I'm going to add a little bit of some more darker color here called Quirky from my palette number nine. Just to kind of build up some of that red and 
rosy color. Yeah, that is exactly the color I needed. Alright, Jazzy, you ready, darling, to make your entrance on these ears? It's shine bright like a diamond. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Now I'm gonna wait to put these in until I spray my hair just so that I don't get it all over my ears when I spray my hair in case you're wondering why I haven't put it on yet. All right, let's do the other one. Okay, gonna go ahead and darken this one up too. Kids have been so good today. I was gonna do something for them yesterday because they always wanna go out on like little trips. And be like, can we pick out like a snack and a little toy? And I'm like, guys, the closer we get to Christmas time, we can't be doing this as much because, you know, Christmas and y'all all have birthdays right around the corner. Like, y'all, I'm not even playing one next week, two the week, one literally the day after Christmas and one four days after Christmas. So I'm like, we don't need to be getting stuff right now. But every now and then, because they've done so good on the grades and really been dealing with a lot of change lately and stuff like that. Will you concede and do it? I need to know how far y'all are on your Christmas shopping because I have not even started yet. I'm still in birthday, Thanksgiving, and Halloween mode right now. And I'm like, I can't go that far yet. I'll be there soon because we're doing our Black Fr big Black Friday sale. If uh, you are not a part of my Black Friday group and you just want to be a part of it, no uh, buying anything is required. If you just want to see until a deal pops up that you're interested in, that's cool too. I'm doing giveaways, games, and all kinds of fun exclusive new products only released for Black Friday. So if you like skincare products, things like that, um, new makeup, things that are good for you and not just all the bad toxins that we find all over the place, um, let's just say... Black Friday or VIP and I'll add you to that list and you'll just get an update every time that one is going. We have 10 bundles. Some of them are only like 24 hours long. Some of them are a couple days long and that way you don't have to be on social media for it to be notified. It will, you'll already know when they come available if you want to pre-order or not. These are pretty big, and everybody kind of flips out over the things that we have going on sale, so don't miss out if you want to be a part of that. You need to let me know because we start on November 1st. Okay, so you see how I started making that look all kinds of fun. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of green into this. I'm trying to hold it by the edges so I don't want too much of that eyeshadow off. But it's kind of awkward. It's kind of like when I do makeup <laughs> for somebody else and not myself. I'm not used to doing it a lot for other people. So I have to remember to try to like hold their face a certain way without feeling like I'm grabbing it and turning their face weird. So if you've ever been through that awkward experience, I'm sorry. I'm getting better. <laughs> I don't do it a lot for other people. Okay. There we go. I like that one better look than the other one. Let me deepen this one up. Okay. There we go. I'm done with those. All right. Let's go ahead and add some fun little uh, black studs to our face because just as a reference point, you don't, you can skip this part if you don't want to. You can get these from Amazon, but they're just cute little black, like, studs that you can apply with lash glue. They come in all different kinds of, like, colors, so you don't have to get just one. So, keep that in mind if you ever want to glitz up or um, even just add something cute to the inside of the inner corner of your eye when you're doing a regular makeup look. That's really popular right now for some reason. I don't really do it, but, hey, to each their own. After I do that, I'll do our lips and our lashes. Hair's always going to be last, so I don't get it all over myself. <laughs> Alright, um... Let's see, put this up over here. Okay. 
here. This over here. You over here. Okay. Trying to move stuff out of my way as we go. Let's move our orange contacts over here because we're not going to use those. Let's see if these are black. Yeah. All right. I don't use these a lot, so don't laugh at me too hard when I try to pick these up. <laughs> I have no idea where my dang tweezers are that normally pick these up. So there's that. I'm going to use, what are these? Come here. I'm going to try these little tweezers I usually use for all different kinds of things. See if I can pull them up apply them onto the face with these little applicators that come with it all comes together in an amazon pack and these are glue bombs away okay just using some profusion cosmetics eyelash adhesive gonna grab these little suckers they come in different colors i don't even know how tiny i'm gonna be able to get these on but we're gonna give it a go all right i'm gonna set it down so i can see what i'm doing this is like performing surgery on a bug <laughs> it's so tiny get off And then I gotta clean this up. Okay. Come out. Big old glue glob. Oh, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna apply just a little bit of this glue. I'm gonna actually just try it straight to my face. How about that? Okay, this little. Tiny, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny thing. Get a little bit of glue. I don't know if I'm even doing it the right way, y'all. Just bear with me. Okay, I'm just going to. Oh, there we go. This is the tedious part. Okay, one down. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple big ones too, just so they don't take forever. Forever in a day. Alright. And I like this glue because I feel like it's a little thicker than the kind you just brush on, which kind of helps to hold, like, hold sort of that little jewel. This is probably why I don't do this as an everyday look. Because of how tiny these thing things are. Get down, get down, get down. It's like stuck to my dang. Tweezers. There we go. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is what gives me anxiety right here. Not even knowing if it's if there's any glue left and then if it's about to cling to the next thing. <laughs> Is it staying on there? I guess. Alright, let's see if we can do another one. We'll give it a break after this one and try something different because this literally, I'm not even playing, gives me anxiety. Okay, there we go. I'm going to do some rolling action there to that one.
Alright. Does that one look like it's trying to come off? I can't tell. Stay on. Okay, just don't do it too close to where your eye folds are. Alright, so there's the first round. I'm gonna give that a break. That's a little stressful, I'm not gonna lie. Alright. Let's do a liner first, lip liner, and then darken it with some lip stick. Let's see. I'm going to use this color called Poised. It's a little bit of a darker color, I think. What is this? Let's see. Oh, I might like that one. That one's courageous. Yeah. Let's do that one first. I changed my mind. Alright, this, I love this look too because it's very messy. So when you see me do this lip liner, know that I am indeed purposely, well, I'm not purposely trying to break this liner, but I am purposely doing a very messy over the lip pigmented kind of look. Because her lips are really blotchy. So we're going to kind of smudge it like that. You don't know how freeing this freaking makeup look is when you're always trying to be so precise about something. And then you don't have to be. I'm like, yes. It's not as smudgy down here, except for maybe a couple of places, so I'm just going to be a little more strategic with where I put that. She's got a little bit coming off here, and it's all kind of blurry from about here to about here. I'm going to darken it up in just a minute. And I just want it to give it like that smudged look. She has gloss, so we're definitely going to do that too. She has this darker color too on the inside. We're going to figure out what that looks like. It almost looks like fake blood, so we may use red. Let me use this poise just to darken up some areas. And right now, it looks pink. We want to kind of redden that up just a little bit. Do a little bit of pink. Just kind of right there. And a hint right there. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of... What color am I using? Now I'm going to use this color called Red Over Heels. Maybe a little of this Berry Bold. Kind of darken that up a little bit. It's got almost like some black going on on the inside. So I'm going to use a little bit of, I think, powder. Yeah, we'll see some black powder. Where are you? It's always the last one I look for. <laughs> Alright, black powder using Legendary. That has been our saving grace for almost every makeup look. You've got to have a good black in your life. Um, let's see. This 
just kind of lining it up on the inner part of the mouth. Give it kind of that toxic look. Okay. A little bit of black. Oh, hint. We need to add a little bit of black. Right up in here. Just kind of darken that red. And it also will set it too. Okay. I'm going to use a tiny bit of this right here. Just black it again right up under the eye to kind of darken it up a little bit. We will use liner too. Kind of give us like this smudged look here. I have just dropped something I needed. Why does that always happen? Alright, just doing that black. Building it up, smudging it out a little bit up under the eyes. <clears throat> I'm going to add some lip gloss. Before I do, I want this to stain a little bit. So I am going to use a stain. I don't even know if we still have these. But I feel like a lip stain is really important right now. Especially if it is a longer look. So if you ever need to hook up on lip stains, I have a high belief that we may have some come available soon. It's just going to add a little bit bit more permanency there okay need the gooeyness the lip look let's do probably a mixture between legendary and loved brown and kind of a pinkish look That is very gooey looking like it should be. Okay. All right. Um, using a smaller brush just to add a little bit of some depth and dimension here. Take a little bit of this black brush color. We're just going to kind of spot it down here. You can't tell a lot because these are super fine. They're mostly used for liners, liquid liners. But if you are patient with it, it will add like the lines that you need to. Just do a little bit more. There we go. Green almost looks gray right here, doesn't it? Okay. Let's add, I want to add one color because I just want a little bit of a pop of this. And I realize we're kind of missing out on it if I don't do it. So it kind of makes me sad if I don't. I've got to use either Inquisitive or this color Jittery. They were some of our new colors that came out a couple months ago. And I have a lot of peaches and things like that, but I feel like I need to add just a smidge of this pink. Just to kind of give it a little something, something. So, 
this will kind of help it pop just a little. Because I feel like it kind of gets drowned out, you know, in the white sometimes. So if I go back in and I kind of add those pop of colors, it'll kind of deepen up for me just a little bit where I wanted it to. Yeah, that was the, <laughs> I feel like I keep saying this, but like these colors are the perfect colors for this look. No doubt. If you guys ever want me to redo this look, I would happily do this one. This one feels fun. It doesn't feel like a, um, a burden like some of them do. Okay. Okay. Okay, where should we go next? Let's add a couple more of those little black spots because I can only handle a little bit at a time or I'll be going crazy. Okay. I feel like the light has gotten so much darker and I know it's not, but it just feels that way. All right, so a couple more of those little black things. I can only handle a little bit at a time, y'all. Just pray for me. I think I'm just going to get lazy, and that usually is when something goes wrong, so there we go. But uh, I think I'm going to brush on if I can open up this lid that just all of a sudden did not work for me. I'm going to brush on some of this so I can maybe pop on a couple at a time. I'm either going to regret this or be like, Daphne, you're a genius. I have a feeling it is going to be the former than the latter. <coughs> okay. Let's move some stuff out of the way. So we don't lose everything and say, where was this? While I was looking for it. All right. Eyeshadows, your turn to move out behind the scenes. All right, let's see if we can get some of these, these little dots, little speckles, little rhinestones on here to save the day. I don't know how somebody has a patience to do these tiny ones. It is the death of me. No, don't do it. I'm going to name each one of them. This is Henrietta. This one is Margaret. No, Margot, not Margaret. Margot, I need you to stay on there. Be a good little girl. It's your turn to shine, baby doll. Let's see. Get her. I just have to drop it on my face and pray that it works. <laughs> That's my lazy way of doing it, y'all. Sorry, not sorry. No, don't get on my lip. Oh! <laughs> Alright, so we see how this went so far. Let me wipe off some of this stuff. Alright. I swear, it's worse than Operation. Has anybody ever played Operation? That gives me anxiety too. I don't like anything that's going to buzz at me if I get it wrong. Just got pink on that. Alright, see what I'm doing? I guess they're supposed to be freckles. I'd have no idea. I'd have no idea. <laughs> Alright, 
get it on there. So far just dropping it on the face feels less stressful than what I have been doing. So that's the method we're using now. Again, do what works best for you. And I don't want to use too many big ones without scattering some small ones in there. So that's why I'm kind of trying to like mix and match them. That's why I like this little bundle because it comes with tiny ones and it comes with big ones from Amazon. So if you need the link, oh my God, there's some really small ones in here. I don't even know how I'm going to get these on my face. They look like the size of freaking mustard seeds or smaller. But anyways, if you need a link, just let me know and I'll send them to you. These are so cool though. Even though they're painstakingly tiny. I mean, smaller than like those diamond paintings. But it, it really looks cool, doesn't it? Having the little different shapes and sizes is so fun. Fun and anxious. Ridden at the same time. Anxiety ridden. Alright, come on. I need you to get up there. Okay, so we did a couple of them there. I feel like really good about that one. It worked when I just brushed my skin with the um, lash thing. So that might be, if you want to do it the easy way, that's probably going to be your best bet. Eric, you going to bed? All right. Sometimes I beat my husband, not beat him, but like I beat him in staying awake longer than he because he works so early in the morning. That's why I like my schedule. <laughs> it works for me. But I so appreciate everything he does. Can I show y'all real quick the flowers that we got for his grandfather in his passing? Because we didn't know the funeral arrangements yet. Oh, are they beautiful? They sent them to him from his work. They were waiting on the porch from 1-800-Flowers when I got home. And I was like, oh, what is this? I almost started crying. They're beautiful. Aren't they? Aren't those flowers beautiful? feel like when we did a look like this before this is what I did I what I haven't done it in such a long time I forgot how hard these were putting these on but I feel like I'm getting the hang of it all right let's do this again I know. Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? It's on Monday. It's on Monday. Tomorrow, tomorrow we have two more days. Yeah, cause tomorrow's Saturday. Y'all know what tomorrow is, don't you? Yeah. Are you excited? We're going to a, a, a fall festival tomorrow. All right. I'm gonna move this one just a little bit. Just a little bit. Look, does anybody else listen to music while they're in the shower? I like to listen to 90s music. And so all the best hits were coming on. I mean, Brian Adams, Whitney Houston, um, Savage Garden for my family who loves like the 90s. Okay. When Whitney Houston came on, she was singing, And I will always love you from the bodyguard. Oh my God. It took me to a special place, y'all. <laughs> 
it was great. All right, a little tip, if you feel like the pattern isn't working for you on jewels, always stick like a big one here and end somewhere with like a point, sort of like a triangle shape with a tiny one. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it has something to do with geometry and the way it's pleasing to the eye. So that's my tip of the day. I'm gonna use a really tiny one, try not to stress about how tiny this is. I mean, it is tinier than my freaking lash anchors and those are tiny, I lose those things like crazy because I don't know what I'm doing with my life sometimes. See, if you end it, <laughs> no! Belinda, why did you do that to me? Sorry if a Belinda's on here. I just named my jewel and she was a little bit of a, a mess. couldn't handle her. Belinda, how dare you do that to me? Alright. I don't see any more of the really, 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 really tiny ones. We're just going to use this one and pray that it works. Alright. Kind of ending it with sort of like a triangle at the top, like it being at the peak. It, it works every time. I don't know why, but it does. Alright, let's do a little bit right here. I get a little scared when it's close to my eye, so we're just going to push the anxiety back. Okay. Let's do a big one. Come on. I believe in you. You see how it turns like a whitish blue and then it'll like dry and visible. That's like my favorite kind of glue. Lash glue is the best. Don't get black or you're going to regret it. <laughs> Alright, maybe one more right here. Why are you yelling? He said, never mind, Xander. I can hear him from here. Come on, little I I have wrinkles. Can you believe? <laughs> right here. I try to make sure it's flipped the right way so it doesn't look like a weird mole. I don't like that one. Ugh, that looked gross. No, we're gonna do a big one there because that was scary. Hold on. Right, I think this is gonna be the last jewel we use. We're gonna get right down to the rest of the look tonight. sweat one bit during that did we but I did remove that jewel oh Jesus Lord just stay on there we go and it's gonna dry and then that'll be clear okay so we got the jewels on I really think that's a night oh no no we didn't let's finish one more spot let's do a couple more these stay on surprisingly well, by the way. If you use a little beauty oil, I feel like it's the best for your skin, but also it just, it comes off very nicely, especially when you're using natural makeup. So you don't have to scrub your face, even if you're putting on, I know for some people you're like, oh, I don't want to put lash glue on my face. I promise you, it is not going to mess your face up. It's meant to be on there for a reason. They especially form a formulate formulate it it's actually better than latex but 
I can understand your hesitation. So make sure you just use natural beauty products. So less is more. And then it also won't be damaging your face when you get it off. It's just going to come right off with that oil, which will dissolve that, um, that adhesive. There we go. Okay. Um, definitely contacts and sprain and lashes. So let's do lashes first. You know I struggle the mess out with these. We're gonna see how these fit me today. Wipe off my hands. I'm gonna use a little makeup wipe to wipe my hands so I don't have extra glue on it right now before I try to mess with these. Let's get our hydration in. hit a spot. Watch a little bit more of The Watcher tonight. Okay. What shows are on your Netflix or Hulu list? If y'all were looking for Shit's Creek or to follow up on that, that is on Hulu right now, just so that you guys know if you needed like a little um, something, something to figure out where everything is. Okay. Let's We'll do the same old, same old since it's been working well for us. I love these little feather. All right, so we want the tail end to be longer to kind of give us that whimsical in flight kind of look. So. This one's going to be for the right side. Smallest, shortest of the um, lashes are going to go on the inside. Longest on the outside. So, I always struggle with not letting these dry long enough. Fingers crossed. We're going to get it down today. I'm going to bend these just a little bit. Let's do this side. Oh, got some on the lashes. My kids were mad at me today. Can we talk about mom fail of the day? It was not mom of the year today. Um, we had, basically it was like a week for, spirit week for like against drugs kind of thing. And they have a theme every single day. Well, so, like, the first day was, like, regular uniform blue color or something. The second one was, like, what was it? Wear red or something. The third one was, like, crazy socks, blah, 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 or vice versa. And I think they did, like, every single day except for today. 
yesterday was like, you know, choose your favorite team. Well, it wasn't in my defense that clear. I just don't assume things. I think a little differently with my right brain, guys. So just keep that in mind. But it said, pink day, get into a shape of a ribbon. We're having photos or whatever. I just assumed that it was for breast cancer awareness, but not necessarily they had to wear pink. And I don't think we had pink for the boys that day. So they just wore the regular uniforms and Xavier was like, by the way, we did get into shape of a ribbon, but we weren't wearing pink mom. And he's just like looking at me like, yep, it's your fault. <laughs> I am so sorry that I failed you. Totally my fault. I should have just asked the teacher, but I didn't. If you don't ask, you'll never know. All right, I'm going to curl my lashes. I am just loving this look today, y'all. I haven't forgotten the ears either. Don't worry. Let's sharpen our black little pencil. We're going to do our underline our eyes a little bit. We're waiting on that to dry. you got to be multitasking while you're waiting so patiently for all the different pieces to come together. Let me know, would you wear this look? Yes, no, maybe so. Don't forget to talk to me. I don't know if comments are broken. All right. There we go. Just underline that eye. If you want a tight line, what that is, is you just lightly go up under the eye. I notice certain eyeliners won't do this very well. If you have a buttery soft one, like this unique Moodstruck Precision Eyeliner Pencil, it'll go on like a dream. All right, prep your lashes. I bend my waterproof wand to get it to kind of perk up a little bit and go right to the curve of my lashes where I curl them. Since this is more of a lengthening mascara instead of a volumizing. Volumizing is going to stay thicker at the base of your lashes. So you only want to go from the base to about mid lash. Whereas lengthening, you can go all the way up if you're just using it. Or if you're using it as a coat over your volumizing. Just go from mid lash to the tips of your lashes. It's my little mascara tip of the day. And I like to blink on it. Kind of just helps me to press it through really easily. Okay. All right, so this one is almost completely see-through. Fingers crossed, that means that the lash glue is now dry. Where is my lash applicator? Here we are, my friend. The moment of truth to see if I actually did it right this time. Oh my gosh, it just could be possibly. You have to kind of wiggle it and smack. Oh no, no! I don't know. Maybe it wasn't right enough, it wasn't tacky enough. You have to be careful with these because, like, otherwise you bend out the shape of them. Kind of lose the whole purpose of it. Try this again. It's sticking more to my finger than it is to anything. No. No, ma'am. No, sir. Oh, I tried so hard. You see how I struggle with this, right? I just want to make this evident and clear that this is no piece of cake or walk in the park for me. All right, you go on the back burner. Let me try the next one. Wipe your hands. Wipe your applicator. Maybe it has glue on it, Daphne. Try 
try to get it right onto the lash base and press it on. Press it on. Oh, that one might have worked, y'all. Maybe. Look how cool that is. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. This one's working a little bit better. I don't think it's 100% where it needs to be, but it's looking really cool. Hey, Judy. Okay. So, there's the first one. I'm not used to how heavy this lash feels, so that's a definite... Has anybody ever seen Esba from the Emperor, whatever it's called, the Emperor's New Clothes or whatever that's called? This is what I feel like her ash, her lashes look like. So these would be like perfect for that costume. <laughs> um, okay, let's try this again. They would be perfect. She's got them crazy eyelashes. Uh, there is no way I would wear these as a normal look, but they are really cool for this pixie look. All right, let's see if we can stick it right on to that lash bed. Come on, family. It's a little harder to squeeze on there because of those feathers. But I think that it's working. Hey, Celia. That's some crazy lashes, aren't they? Woo! Son, you almost have to brush these things. <laughs> I like them though. They're very fun. Totally fun. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and spray the hair and then put the ears on. Okay, are y'all ready for that? I feel like this, the pink's going to be good because of what's on my face. I'll be right back. I don't want to spray this in my dining room. But I'm going to go in the bathroom with my paper towel. I'll be right back. Number two, it looks almost purple and dark hair because I had a wig the last time that was kind of like silver, so it turned out a different color. It's not as hot pink. It's okay. It's going to work. Um, number three, it clogs a lot, so you have to keep wiping the nozzle and praying that it will spray while you're babying it. So there's that. 
for anybody who has fun with hairspray, colored hairspray, yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to use some of these um, bobby pins with my hair that I got with my my 20s doll look because I just feel like it's not gonna my ears are a little smaller than what this is actually supposed to be oh no that's not gonna work maybe maybe not we gotta figure out our mouth our wardrobe malfunction today family guys hey oh I love you I can't wait to see are you going to look I can't decide if I want to go to uh reunion next year or not do you feel like it's worth it i haven't got to see an insider or speak to an insider who actually went i would go if, if you were going to be there i just don't want any y'all saying that i ate my little debbie cakes too much we know we know we gained some weight now <laughs> okay these are a little fickle you're gonna have to like anchor these suckers down if you have small ears like I do. Mine stick out, but they're still small. They're small and they stick out. They don't sit flush against my head. What do y'all think? Good luck? Maybe? I gotta cover up where my ear where my ear was so that y'all don't think I have real human ears and that I have elven ears, pixie ears. <laughs> Interesting, huh? I love you, girl. Okay. I like this. This is fun. I love props. They're so exciting. All right, that's our final look. What do y'all think? Would you wear it? I feel like we did a really good look considering. Now, let's put in these contacts. I know y'all thought I forgot about it. I almost did. <laughs> let's put in these contacts and we're going to be done. Um, maybe spot a couple more of these green spots on here because it, it's not standing out as much as I thought it would. I'm going to spray it. I feel like spraying it is a good way to do that. Shout out to class 2003. Oh yeah, that definitely gave it a more stronger look that we were trying to there. Okay. All right. Now the eyes. These are called Zombie Curse for those who want to get them. They're by TTD. TTD EYE. They always come with holders and they have little applicators. And I recommend letting them sit. We did not let these sit for an hour like I should have, or a couple hours, actually eight hours is how you should do it. Um, so it's gonna be foggy anyway, cause they're not prescription. Um, I don't recommend wearing them if they feel like they're dirty. Let's see how creepy these look. can't wait to do a picture of this one. Oh, uh-uh. I still have my old contacts in here. Uh-uh, that's not going to work. Uh, why are you not going in? Up, down, all around. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that is, oh, heck yeah. I'm not going to be able to see worth of anything. So if y'all comment, I'll have to look in a minute. That is so cool. Eric, come here and look at these contacts.
This is a bomb.com. That is the Isn't it? <laughs> is it too am I too old to be saying bomb.com? Is that like I don't think that's one right. Sorry for anybody trigger. Ugh, no, I'm about to lose these. I can actually see not badly through these. Gosh, these are like Marilyn Manson looking eyes. That is so freaking creepy, especially when the pupil doesn't line up with your original pupil. That is creepy. It does move around a little bit. So letting them soak, I definitely recommend. What do y'all think? Creepy, right? I love this look. All right, we're going to go. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Don't forget to give me some hearts and share this out if you like this look. If you want a specific tutorial on something or have questions about something, don't forget to let me know. I love y'all. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget to stay sharp and always be on point.